Now, who's excited for our next speaker? Yay! Nine people. Brilliant. Happy days. It's getting better. Um, it's really important the people you meet along the way, especially in addiction, especially in recovery, and you remember the people along the way. And that leads me on to my next guest. And there are some exceptional people out there. There's a lot of unsung heroes that work in the field of addiction. And every now and again, you do meet someone who just demonstrates compassion, demonstrates hope, and has this unwavering care for people. Um, and they just stick with you. And our next speaker is one of those people. Three years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Ben um, while he was speaking at the University of Ulster in Coleraine. And I was immediately drawn to his story. And I was immediately drawn to how he spoke about people who were struggling with substance use issues. And showing that roadmap of recovery to people is really important, and it's possible, but it requires hope, and the hope that change is possible. And nobody knows that better than our next speaker. So can I welcome to the stage, Ben Delizia. Massive round of applause. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. Great to see you all. Um, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here. And amongst very special speakers as well. Uh, but for me, it's like, what on earth I'm going to say here? But what an honor. Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk a little bit about Extern. Um, it's a fantastic organization where I had privilege to work for three years now. Uh, Extern has been working um, for supporting people with addictions for over 40 years. Uh, so all the services around Belfast, and also I'm based in the Northern Trust area. Um, so 25,000 children, young people, and individuals and families are supported by Extern. So we work with a really tremendous team, and I must say this, and I know some of um, um, Extern staff are here, and, but I can say that these guys do an exceptional job, and they're saving people's lives every day. So I'm really thankful to be part of this team. So, um, we, um, I'm not going to talk about all the services that the extern covers, but I'm going to talk specifically for Low Threshold team. Um, low Threshold is a service that we're providing harm reduction. Uh, I uh, worked for Low Threshold for, for over a year or so. Uh, when I started with Extern. So the key workers would go uh, and talk to, to the clients that have been referred by different agencies or self-referred. So we go and see them in the midst of chaos. Uh, when people are still using it to maximum, maybe they have no, uh, they haven't even tried to, uh, to reduce their intake. So the key workers would go and visit them and sometimes imagine how dark place these clients are. And I can say that the people that go and the staff that they go there, they, they carry in hope for these people because probably they suffered from addictions for many, many years. So imagine what a vital job that is. So sometimes you may have a client wo where we would say, have you had food? Do you have food? No, I haven't had food for three days. Then we're, instead of just giving general support, then we're phoning a, a food bank and pr trying to provide that food or electric and oil and so on. But it's amazing how other charities and churches, they get involved to help you know, us and so we can deliver that support to the clients. So the harm reduction service, it's about either helping people to reduce their intake, alcohol intake or drug intake, keeping diaries and keeping their motivation and keeping see how they are. Uh, which it can take a long time. It's not just a quick fix for six sessions and so on, but that could take three months or five months or longer. So um, we cover, as I said, all Northern Trust area, supporting with issues with housing. Sometimes uh, people are coming from maybe from prison or maybe they're from the hostels, and we, we will get in touch with housing associations and so on and complete forms and for their benefit forms and so on. So it's not just helping them to reduce their drug or, or alcohol intake, but so many other things as well. So the low threshold, we work very closely with GPs and other referring agencies, uh, providing needle exchange, I think is really vital for those drug users, um, especially heroin, heroin users. Um, is, this is recognized worldwide harm reduction technique, and Extern is very uh, skilled uh, for this. Um, 
Naloxone, I'm sure some of you know, um, uh, but Naloxone, it's a, it's a medication designed to rapidly um, reverse um, opioid overdose. All staff, all external staff are trained to use Naloxone and save lives. Um, external provides training for all agencies, so we've have, we have some fabulous uh, harm reduction training going just right now. So if you haven't done it and you're working with people with drug and alcohol, please go and do it because it's free and you can save someone's life. Um, therapeutic interventions. Uh, as an inter integrative counselor, I am part of Step 2 team now, and we provide um, sessions which last 50 minutes of counseling sessions, so sometimes six sessions or, or, or maximum to 12 sessions. Uh, also using different techniques, CBT, relapse management, Sometimes clients, they may have been through uh, rehab or detox and then they maybe they just need a little relapse uh, prevention or relapse uh, awareness and then they will go back on track again. And family support, I believe I'm a great fan of uh, supporting family members as well in the same time because if we do um, support them and let's say one colleague is supporting one uh, client and then I'm supporting the family member. I think if both of, us, both of them get the support, I think they both do really well. So we do provide counseling for family support as well. Uh, doing psychoeducation, signposting, um, information, various substance uh, misuse. So many times I will go and deliver some uh, um, addiction awareness or so on in public. Uh, to, you know, to, to different community uh, groups and so on. Um, smart recovery, so last year I introduced smart recovery to, to Extern and so far has been really, really good, really beneficial. Um, half of my, my team, they've already been, um, they're getting trained, they're starting to deliver uh, smart reco recovery as well. Um, I'm, I was introduced to smart recovery when I was working in England, probably about 2012 or something like that. And I really, uh, I'm passionate about smart recovery because uh, it, it, um, it discourages people to say I'm an addict or I'm an alcoholic. And, and I think everybody um, should go through some difficult times, but they don't have to label themselves. So um, here uh, in May, I uh, joined Unite for Recovery. Uh, Charlie, sh she's here, uh, she said, oh, Ben, you can just do two-mile walk in over Smart Recovery. And I thought, oh, do you mean I need to lose some weight or anything? But no, I actually did it. And uh, for the month of May, I was the only one in Northern Ireland, which I'm so grateful I did. And I bombarded people with videos and so on. But this was to promote recovery. And I believe with my heart that recovery is possible and people can change by using tools of Smart Recovery. So. And um, we, so far, we have supported probably 30 plus people that have gone, they've gone through uh, the meetings and I think it's really successful so far. Um, refer referral process, so um, it's really easy. Uh, anybody in the Northern Trust area or anywhere in, in, with um, different uh, external groups, they can self-refer, GP referrals, police, other agencies, families, um, and you can get uh, our email address in here, and if you know somebody that needs support or a family member that they need a bit of counselling, then please do get in touch with, with our um, ASM refer referrals. Um, a little bit about my, me. So, I'm originally from Albania. Um, I came to the UK in 1996. Uh, I was much younger then. Um, but um, I had do done a lot of charity work, especially with, uh, in, with the Kosovan War, if you remember, 1998, 99. Um, and then uh, just really ju just done humanitarian work in Macedonia, Ma Montenegro, Albania, and Kosovo. Uh, but in 2006, I came to live permanent in England. And uh, was a homeless shelter had started, one of the churches uh, down the road that started this homeless shelter. And uh, they were desperate for volunteers. And I thought, hmm, what can I do? I don't really know what to say to these people. Imagine how difficult I found that. But again, the next time they, they asked for volunteers because they were very desperate. And I thought, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to give them some, some sandwiches and soup, and that's it. And I went there, the pastor that he was leading this, 
He chatted to me and said, I'm here to help. I don't, don't really know what I'm doing. And five minutes later, he gave me keys and done the runner. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said um, I am so tired. He said, I've done this every night. And I thought that this will be only a couple of people coming in. But every night, there were two, three, four, ten people or more. And I said to him, you know what? I am going to help you. And I did that for four months every single day. This was 2006, 2007. So they will open up from end of uh, November till March. And something clicked in my head and I thought, you know what? These people are actually great people. Obviously, all of them are using drugs or alcohol. And sometimes, no volunteer will turn up. I'm on, on my own with 24 homeless. Imagine, I was crazy. But I am so thankful I did that because it has changed my life. And since 2006, 17 year later, I'm still working in addiction field. So I caused a lot of problems for the council. And then we raised 10,000 pounds for the project. And then after that, um, I went to a detox and private rehab. Very successful in the UK, in Burton-on-Trent. It's called BAC O'Connor, or Burton Addiction Center. And uh, I said... Um, this is what I've done. I don't have an experience of addiction myself, but this is what I helped. And they said, oh, we need you. And I was there as a support worker for, for a year. Then I became supervisor for four or five, and then I became a manager. And I was managing a team of 15 staff and probably 40 residents. After that, then becoming a manager, and then I started to volunteer for a charity similar to Nexus called SARAC which supported people with sexual abuse and domestic violence, and I did that for four and a half years every single week. After that, then I started raising more money for different charities, and I did the Langothlin walk or somewhere in uh, Wales, and then um, I did the street pastors here when I moved to Northern Ireland for one and a half years. I volunteered for St. John Ambulance for two years. Uh, I've sailed from Europa and from uh, Belfast Castle, and many, many, many more. But the thing is, it's not about me today. It's about all these people and stories that we heard that recovery is possible. And, you know, and hearing people that their life has changed for good, you know, is amazing to see. And you guys are so exceptional too because you're making that difference in someone's life. And I encourage you today, keep doing it more and more. Because, you know, Sometimes they just need to be heard. Sometimes they just need to, uh, to be there for them. Sometimes it's just um, have a coffee. You know, sometimes I would take people to, to hospitals because they were desperate. You know, I remember one time I went to A&E with one client, and he, and they said, oh, here she comes again. I said, do you know this lady? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's, al she's already been 18 times this month here. But could you see the desperation that people are? But because we carry hope, we're still there to give, give them that support and, and say, come on, you can do it. I had, um, uh, yes, even just yesterday, I had a lady who, she was drinking uh, these cartons of wine, three liters of wine every day. And I worked with her. She tried different things, different approaches, didn't work. Last year, I did 12 sessions with her. And yesterday, I got a text message. She says, I am one year sober. I thought, come on, you can do it, you know really made my day. And the thing is, this encourages me to keep going more and more and help one and another and another and another. So that's why I'm so passionate about recovery and that I could shout, you know, say, recovery is possible, you know. So that's me. Um, so the recovery journey that I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about a gentleman who I met him very early days when I started working in the uh, detox and rehab. And uh, uh, I'm going to show you this story and, and, and see. Hello, everyone. My name's Michael and I'm an addict. Thank you, Ben, for asking me to do this for you. Um, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I'm an addict. I'm an addict in recovery. Um, I said I'd be dead by the time I was 30 years old and today's my 45th birthday. I'm 15 years, 3 months and 14 days in recovery um, of abstinence-based recovery. Um, 
my history. I come from a broken home. My father was a violent alcoholic and my mother was a schizophrenic. Um, they split when I was three years old, although my dad still had access to me till I was 13, till I walked away. Um, so I was subjected to his abuse. I was scared I was going to lose my mum like I'd lost my dad, so I helped hide her schizophrenia um, till I became old enough to see that it was a problem. Um, you know, I got bullied at school, all of those things. Um, you know, I, I, I felt so different. Uh, you know, my journey of addiction, I, I, I was a homeless street addict. Uh, begging off passers-by, selling the big issue, living in abandoned buildings, um, living in a penthouse apartment. Unfortunately, it had no windows and no amenities. It was top floor of a multi-storey car park in Birmingham. Um, you know, I grew up on a council estate, got bullied at school, all, all that. Um, you know, but this is a story about my recovery. Um, you know, and I've gave you my background. Um, and people like me, we, we we never went to university. That was my belief system. I sit here now and I have a master's degree. I, I did an undergraduate degree. I recently finished a qualification, a level seven qualification at the university. Nottingham Trent University and that was in diverse leadership development. I hold a qualification for the University of Derby in housing sector governance. None of these things would have been possible if it wasn't for being in recovery. Um, you know, I had to be removed from society uh, because I, I just couldn't do it out there. You know, everybody and everything I knew was an addict and was around addiction. Um, today my world's so different. Um, you know, as I said, I have my two degrees. They're both from the University of Nottingham. That's in humanistic counselling practice and trauma-informed studies. Um, Throughout my recovery, I've gone through the deaths of loved ones. Uh, my mother passed away seven years ago and she never, ever gave up on me. And I'm so happy that she got to see me in my recovery. Um, you know, life's amazing and as a result of that, um, I know I don't ever have to use again. You know, and I've built a life that I don't want to give up, you know, so I don't have to use drugs. You know, I have my own business. I'm the operational service lead of a gambling addiction charity here in the United Kingdom, specifically in Nottingham and Derby. Um, yeah. You know, the things I've achieved outside, I have a family that I've met in recovery that are my family. Um, you know, I, I became British champion kickboxing, world champion, ICO world champion in 2019. All of these things are part of my recovery. Um, and it's amazing. And I have myself back and I'm getting to know myself. Um, Ben only asked for five minutes and I'm about to go over. So I'll finish this, you know, anybody, if any of you are struggling, you know, anyone who's struggling, you can do it. It can be done. Trust me. Um, I'll send Ben a picture to show you of me before. Um, and I'll finish with this. Uh, ben can share with you. Valam in dare it, Ben. Um, I'll let him share with you. That's Albanian, thank you, but I said more than that when I first met him. Thank you, everyone.
What a tremendous guy. And he's really, imagine when I just started working in addiction, and now 15 years plus he's in recovery. And look how much he's achieved. And uh, that's when Michael came to rehab, to detox. Being homeless and being so underway. <laughs> and I give together with the nurse, I countersound his first medication to detox, you know, and you, you see how far he's come. I'm definitely not going to fight with him because he's a world champion now. <laughs> um, but he was so honored to be asked to share this story. And he said, yeah, mate, I can do that, no problem. I thought, wow, <laughs> this is so good. Um, so, and here, yeah, that's Michael there. So, um, and more, more achievements. Um, so another story, because we've got a bit of more time. Um, oh, maybe we are out of time. Um, so another guy was, he came to detox, and uh, it says that he felt suicidal, nearly killed himself twice. But um, when he came to detox, I was delivering group work in detox, and uh, he really struggled. And then he would just give him a bit of support and continue to do that. And then he is in recovery now since 2011. So he started to volunteer at a, a tea rooms, making cakes, which is never done in his life. And then went to college, did that. And then after that, he has won a national award uh, for, for his portfolio for cakes. And he says, he says, my competition, he says, there were 20,000 people, but I won. And it shows that through his recovery journey, now his portfolio is getting used in all the colleges in, in England. So um, when I was working in rehab uh, during the graduation, we would uh, deliver a recovery coin. So this is a symbol of, of your uh, recovery journey. Um, it has a little message in here. So a couple of weeks, uh, months back, I was in the US and I, I bought some. So I don't want to embarrass anybody, but if you are in recovery, you're very welcome to get one. So myself and Gary will deliver, so I'll be on one side and Gary will be the other side. But if you are in recovery from addiction, please do come and get one of these, because this will remind you of your achievement to say that recovery is possible. And when I used to do the gra graduations, I used to say, even if you think of relapsing and going back to the old ways, just go to that because you worked so bloody hard to achieve that. And the thing is, if, if, if you want to, please do come and get one because um, maybe you'll think, ah, this strange person from Albania gave me this gift and that may continue to keep you in recovery. So um, I'm going to finish with this quote um, that I really like. So you're only one destination away from a totally different life. So if you are struggling from addiction, you, ha you are not there yet, please do get support. We've got many, many, many organizations in here that are providing drug and alcohol services, and we're so blessed to have, because here we can pick people as quick, but when I was working in rehab many, many years ago, our waiting list was six months to one year. So, or in London at that time, 2000. 10, 12, 13, was uh, at least two years the waiting list. So when I go to Karakwan every two weeks and do group work there and, and see people coming much quicker, with, I tell them how blessed are we to have those services and not to wait so long. So thank you. Um, I have a little gift for Gar and the team. Um, uh, Mitch Winehouse wrote a story about his daughter, Amy Winehouse's story, and I'm they were, this was given to me by Mitch and signed copies, so I am going to donate to Dark just as a symbol of saying that, come on, you're doing amazing. And uh, I thank you for this. So. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, if anybody is brave enough to come forward, um, what a nice opportunity to receive something. Because recovery is not flipping easy, I don't care who says it is. If you're brave enough to do that, what a wonderful thing. And if people do come, applaud them and celebrate them, because this is difficult. Yeah. And this is difficult, guys. <laughs> okay, so please just come to the front. Brilliant, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Massive applause. Hey, well done. Thank you. Well done, buddy. Well done. Hey, well thank done, you. Buddy. Bless you. Well done. Hey, well done. Oh, thank you well very done. much. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, you. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Keep clapping. Don't be stopping. Wow. Yeah. Oh, how powerful is this? Good, good man. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah, so, what powerful. Thank you Congratulations. so much. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Well done. Hey, go with it. Well done. Hey, thank you. That's so superb. Much. Well done. Glad. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Jesus. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Amazing. Well done, mate. Have we any more? Have we any more? Wow. Didn't see Congratulations. This Guys, thank good you. Man. Well done. Well done. Hi, you? Give me your name and I will give you one after this. I've just, I've just run out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do you any more left? Yeah, I have more. Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> we have more. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I didn't expect this. <laughs> Neither did I. Thank you. Hi, Ben, thank you. They've got some leftovers. Huh? Thank you so much. Um, as I said before, I had the pleasure of meeting this man three years ago, and when he comes into your life, he's there, and you know that. And that was just amazing. Like, that's not what we were expecting. Really but thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Not for you. This is for me. <laughs> thank you. And this is mine. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank ben, you. Thank, thank you. you. Guys, Ben is... <laughs>